with the release of Sword and Shield on the 15th of November, I've jumped onto my sketch pad, put together three new designs for you to represent your Team Starter, Team Skull Bunny, Rookie Gang, or Team Sobel. Hop over to the Teespring store now. You can grab a 10% discount with the discount code STARTER. Hi friends and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. We are in the Ultra Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and we're going to be continuing on with this Raid on team today. So, we kicked off with it earlier in the week. We've had some really good games so far this weekend. Not all of them have went our way. So, today I'm really hoping that things, the tables turn, we get a few better results with the team. And uh, I feel like we're kind of getting a little bit more adjusted to it and how it's working uh we had the banded ray yesterday really catch us out and kind of clinch that game right out of our grasps uh in yesterday's episode and if you'd like to check that out before coming into today's one i'll link a card up there for you, you can go and check that out and then come into today's episode but uh the team is always down in the description below there is a roll pace and a poker pace check out the details and try it out if you would like to Radon is a core I find very interesting. You know, it has on paper everything that doesn't make sense about it, but it does function very well as a team. I think the one thing that I would possibly do if I was to change this up is maybe change the Groudon to be a bit more bulkier, uh, a bit more defensively built, and uh, maybe have some other coverage moves. I think something like Dragon Claw could be extremely good on on uh, on Groudon on this team, but. They're just uh, everything's up for debate uh, on on this sort of team, um, and we're still finding our way with it. So, lots to discover. And uh, we've got a first opponent of the episode. We've got Sharpedo, fifteen twenty six rated player. So we'll hop straight into it. At least we're finding opponents, which is good. And uh, if you saw the promo at the start of the video, while the, our opponent is kind of just taking his time coming in, we've like got the black screen of death going on. But we had a uh, connection issue. Okay, so we'll carry on searching. It's a little bit sad. Okay, at least it's not on our end. Um, it's the second time this has happened this week, but we'll just continue on. Um, okay, uh, there was a promo at the start of the video. We've got Sword and Shield coming out very, very soon, 15th of November. And to celebrate that, I've done three designs of the starter Pokemon, three adaptations of the starter Pokemon. We've got a Team Skull Bunny shirt, a Team Sobble shirt, and a Grookey Gang shirt. So if you'd like to grab one of those, they're really nice designs. Uh, put them together myself. There's a promo video on the channel as well, just showing you some sketches as I was doing it, going along with those there is a 10% code at the minute if you use the code starter when you are at the checkout it will give you 10% off your order so if you do grab one remember to tweet me um, I tag me in a tweet I would love to see the shirt on or on Instagram as well and I will make sure to share out on Instagram and uh, share your loveliness with one of these shirts on and uh, it'll be interesting to see which team you guys are on as well so we've got Luca up as our first opponent of the episode so we'll hop straight into our, our first uh, team preview Okay, so Luca is running a team of Groudon, Salamence, Incineroar, Tepu Fini, Lunala, and Stakataka. So it is that World Championship winning core. And I don't know if we've um, we've played this team and Luca earlier in the week, but it does feel very familiar. I don't know. I need to. <laughs> I should have a better memory for this. But anyway, we know about this team. It's very solid offensively and defensively. It's got Trick Room, it's got Tailwind, it's got Double Intimidate, it's very disruptive, it's very good positionally, and you kind of want to avoid the positions of Lunala in a Tailwind with Groudon on the field and kind of reverse with a Trick Room up. So, um, what are we going to do? We need Incineroar, I do feel like that. I'm going to go Incineroar and Coco. We're going to bring Groudon for sure, and I think we will bring our Rayquaza as well. Do we want Speed Control? Probably. Hmm. I think we'll be all right without it. So we'll go for that and we'll see how we get on against Luca in this first one today. I feel a little bit rushed coming into this one today, but hopefully it all pans out well. Um, two losses yesterday are never good, are they? Never good. It was an entertaining episode. I feel like the games yesterday were very good. The teams that we saw were diverse and there were some really unique things like the fight team Z. Uh, Lunala, which we very rarely see now, catching us off guard. Um, but uh, total best of one sort of scenarios in a lot of them. But um, it's always nice to pick up the big W when you can. 
um, and it's unfortunate that we uh, we did miss out on that yesterday. So we're going to see Groudon and Tepafini come out for my opponent. Okay, right. Well, do we just double tap the Finny? Um, I mean, we could switch into Ray with our Incineroar. The only problem is switching into Ray. I don't really like... Um, I mean, one of the things we could potentially do is we could just fake out the Finny and go for a Volt Switch into it as well. If it's got Protect though, like this team sometimes has, we're pretty screwed because we've locked in already. Um, and it's not always a good presumption to think that Finny's got, uh, not got Protect because when it does, and we saw it to good effect uh, at the World Championships, how, how good it can be. Um, thankfully, we see the Groudon actually switch it out because we kind of, I think, made a bit too much of a risky play here, to be honest. Um, in all honesty, if we really, yeah, I mean, that's the, that is the problem right there. Uh, the, the Finny protecting, if the Groudon stays in Impressivus Blades, you know, we're in, we're in like a world of, of trouble. So what we'll do is we will, I think we'll U-turn out with Incineroar onto the opposing Tapu Finny just to get some damage off there and we'll just protect Coco. Because uh, of the fake out pressure that we've got coming from my opponent's side this turn. Finny gonna switch out. Uh, we are gonna see Groudon come onto the field. Okay. Another Finny going away makes the, uh, the switch into Rayquaza a lot easier. So I'm kind of tempted if we can get our Incineroar out this turn um, to pivot into our Groudon. Honestly. Um. Okay, so we do get Incineroar out. Maybe we see the opposing Incineroar pivot out as well. I still want to get Groudon onto the field, I think. And we might see the opposing Incineroar pivot out and then Tapu Fini come onto the field. It'll be interesting to see what they do. Lots of pivoting, lots of switching, ball positioning. And uh, I feel like we got away with one after that first turn, really. Uh, there's a U-turn, and it is into our Groudon, so making sense. And I think Tapu Fini will be the Pokemon that comes back in here. Okay, we know the Groudon on my opponent's side is likely going to be quite bulky. Okay, my Salamence coming out. Okay, I don't mind this too much. Because we can potentially Earth Power the Groudon and go for a Ferium into the Salamence. Hmm. Because we want to be able to stop the Tailwind. That's the one thing we need to be able to do. We might lose Coco here. Salomon's going to switch straight back out. And Incineroar come in. Yeah, trying to cycle these Intimidates, thinking that we are physical Groudon, but unfortunately we're not. We're going to lose Coco, I think, in the process, which makes dealing with the Salomon's a little bit more difficult. Um. But we are pretty trigger happy with this Ferium. And that's one thing I've noticed, like when I've got Coco out, and it's maybe something to take note of going forward playing this, is you've got to really, I feel with, with Ferium Coco, you've got to be very patient. I think that's like the art of playing uh, the Z-Move Coco. Uh, you've got to be very patient and almost lock your opponent into a position where you can guarantee that you're going to get the target that you want. Do you get the Earth Power into the Groudon? We could have dazzled there. That would have been a big play for us, really, because then... Oh, Groudon hangs on. Okay. <clears throat> Just about. Um. Yeah, the problem with Dazzling there is if the Salamence stays in, it can get a Tailwind up, uh, which isn't really ideal. We'll bring Incineroar onto the field. We do have Precipice Blades of our own, um, but I feel like... Salamence is probably going to come back out onto the field. Um, we could fake out the opposing Incineroar. But I'm going to switch into Ray. And I'm actually going to go for a U turn out into the Incineroar here. To try and get. Just preserve our Intimidate, I think. I don't see a Precipice Blades coming out from the Groudon. I could be wrong, could be wrong, but I would imagine the Groudon... 
Yeah, it does switch out. And we'll probably see a double U turn and the Groudon come back in. Uh, the Salamence going to come back out onto the field. Can intimidate onto Ray. And now with Coco gone, it makes things a lot more difficult for ourselves. We're going to see a fake out. It's going to be into our Groudon slot, but we do get the pivot out actually with uh, Incineroar onto the opposing Incineroar and get Groudon back onto the field. <coughs> the problem is though, we can't really prevent the Salamence now getting a Tailwind up, which is a little bit awkward. But we could potentially Sword Stance this turn. Um, not really too worried about what the Salamence is going to be doing. Yeah. And I think the Incineroar. Well, this is what we'll do. We'll Sword Stance. And we'll go Earth Power into the Incineroar. Because to get rid of the Groudon, the Salamence needs to attack, which means it's not Tailwinding. And if it Tailwinds here, then it's not really... It's, we've got, I think, resources to kind of get around the Tailwind. Because Groudon should see out this turn, so we still have three Pokemon. So we'll see the Salamence Mega Evolve. See the rate. Mega Evolve, and we'll see what the Salamence goes for. Probably, I would say more than likely Hyper Voice. Oh, it goes Tailwind. So that's that's better for us, because now we'll be able to get rid of this Incineroar with an Earth Power. Get our Soul Stance up, plus one. The Groudon's in extreme speed range. So, <clears throat> as long as this takes down the Incineroar. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, it's a Salt Vest. Okay. That's into the Ray. Um, still not the worst because the Finny probably comes in now and then we've got our Incineroar to come onto the field intimidate the Salamence and we've got Fake out the next turn we've still got to switch back into Groudon if we want it um, <clears throat> see what my opponent's going to go for is the Tapu Finny. We've got to watch out for the, the Z move here. I think that's one thing that we need to be mindful of because I think that this build, the, the, the Finny has the Z move. Okay, so we'll switch into Incineroar. And then we have that fake out the next turn, which we can make maybe utilize to go for another Sword Stance, fake out the Finny rather than um, going for an attack. Because once the Tailwind runs out, then we can can deal with the, the, the Finny if we want to a little bit better and we're not so hindered by continuous uh, uh, intimidate cycling from my opponent. Okay, so there's the Hyper Voice coming out. Yep. Cinema taking that pretty comfortably. And there's the Z move. Alright. Now we might even be better going for a Dragon Ascent into the Salamence this next turn and faking out the Finny. Okay. So we take that, at least we protected on it, um, and we'll see what my opponent goes for now. Now do we Dragon Ascent the Salamence? I think we probably do. The Salamence should take a double edge or a hyper voice. Yeah, and we'll fake out the Finny. We might see double protect here from my opponent. And if we do, it's still not the end of the world because Finny's still in a. Uh, our Incineroar is still in a decent position to pivot out the following turn. Um, okay, so the Finny going to switch out. We're going to see Incineroar come onto the field. We'll get rid of the Sword Stance boosts. Still not. Still fine. Still fine, because we might see a double edge from the Salamence here. I could have doubled the Salamence. Okay, yeah, we're just going for a Hyper Voice. This should proc a berry on our Rayquaza. Yeah. There we go, get all that tasty health back. And Dragon Ascent, and just getting damage into the Salamence now is just all we want. And you think like three of my opponent's four Pokemon are all in extreme speed range, probably after this. Maybe not Salamence. Maybe after a U-turn. I would say, potentially, after a U-turn. Okay. Um, we need to get some damage onto the Ments to put it into extreme speed range, honestly. 
I'm gonna have to protect Rayquaza and I'm gonna U-turn out with Incineroar onto the Salamence. Because <sighs> I think the Incineroar on my opponent's side, does it fake out? I don't know, I think it probably goes for a U-turn again. Recycle that Intimidate support once more. There's a fake out. It's into the ray. Okay. Solomon's gone hyper voice. If this is enough, chip, then this works out so good for us. Oh, I don't know. If, I don't. I really don't know if an extreme speed is going to be enough to get it. But we've got Groudon to come out now, and I think the Solomon has to go for a tailwind. Hmm. Until when Pit is out. Now, is an extreme speed enough to get the mints? I don't think it is, you know. I really don't think it is. But, I think you've got to go for a Tailwind again. And one thing we could potentially do is go Dragon Ascent into the mints and, and switch into Incineroar here rather than Groudon. Keeping Groudon out and going for an Earth Power into Incineroar. Because I don't think the Mence can pick up a knockout onto Rayquaza with anything it's got. And I think with three Pokemon we've got a better chance of stalling out another Tailwind. I'm just doing this because I really don't feel like Extreme Speed's gonna be enough. If we were plus one I would definitely 100% all day go for that Extreme Speed into the Mence. It is going for a Tailwind again, um, and the thing is now with Ray, uh, we are going to be able to get rid of the Ments, uh, but we need to keep Ray really for the, the Tapu Fini. Um, and we've got an active fake out going into the next turn, unless we see the U-turn from the Incineroar, which I'd imagine we probably do. Ooh, Darkest Lariat. Oh, this could be bad. This one minus two defense, they're minus one. Oh, wow. That does like nothing. Okay. That is a weak Incineroar. <laughs> I'm surprised. I thought that would do a lot more damage. Um, yeah, the type of thing is going to come back in now. Okay, now we can potentially go for a Sword Stance, fake out into the Tapu Fini. Might be the best port of call, honestly. Knowing that that Darkest Larry isn't doing really that much damage. Uh, fake out Finny, go for a sword stance. And the Incineral and the Groudon are in uh, extreme speed range. We might need to sack our Groudon here. Um, Finny gonna protect, okay. I don't think we could risk not faking out the Tapu Finny, in all honesty. We'll probably see a U turn from the opposing Incineral, which would make a lot of sense. Um, but I think the next turn we probably just sack. Yeah, we'd probably sack our own Groudon, switching it in, protecting Ray, hoping the Groudon goes down, which it probably should, which it will do, and then bringing Cinderella back in, we got that fake out support to get around that last turn of Tailwind, and then we can clean up, pretty much. Okay, so... Yeah, I don't think we keep Incineroar on the field. Now we need the fake out support. The only issue is if we see the Groudon switch out for for Incineroar now. Um, and the Moonblast into our, our Incineroar, taking our Groudon down for us to come back in with Incineroar, and then they've got the faster fake out. But then we just trade fake outs, right? Unless they fake out our Incineroar and then Rayquaza's kind of left high and dry. That would be bad, but not the end of the world. So Precipice Blade's coming out. This will be enough to get rid of our Groudon. Heal Pulse wouldn't be ideal from the Finny now onto the Groudon, but could be worse. Moonblast, that's fine. I think what we need to worry about is... Um, 
the opposing Groudon. Oh man, I'm running I'm running low on battery. Is this my charger? Okay, let's hope this, this works, because my light is flashing. There we go. We're okay. Um so yeah, we I think extreme speed the grout on and we'll fake out the finny. The finny's gonna protect, but like I say, I can't risk not faking it out and allowing it to get a moon blast off. It's like the one thing that can take us down. We might see the Groudon switch out for Incineroar. Um but this should be the last turn of Tailwind now. And if the Groudon does switch out to the Incineroar, that that is fine because then we get rid of their fake out support, which makes things a lot easier for us, honestly. So we'll see what Luca is gonna do. Finny protecting, yep, yeah, that's fine. This is the, the other worst thing for us here really is that uh, we get a fake out now and um, extreme speed is going to tick down the ground and now they do have an active fake out but we can just protect around it um, and then we really need to take down the incineral the opposing incineral because we don't want to attack into the finny go down to minus three and then the darker slayer pick up the knockout um we've got to hope that a, a plus one dragon ascent should get the finny which it should do i would imagine so Let's go for a protect with Ray, and this is so obvious. But I think if you're my opponent, you've still got to, well, you have to make a call, don't you? And I think a good call is going for maybe fake out into Incineroar, but if you do that, you're gonna proc our berry. So an our Incineroar will stick around. I think you've gotta fake out the Rayquaza and Moonblast our Incineroar um, to get rid of it. So we'll see what they do, we'll see. I would love to see a fake out into our Incineroar. I just don't see them not faking out the Rayquaza here. But if they make a call, that is, that's like super, super fair play to, to Luca for making that call. Protect our Rayquaza and we'll see a fake out into our Incineroar. That's perfect. Okay. That's ideal. Okay. Now we can win the game. And a Scald. Yeah, it's still not going to be enough to do the job um, because now our Incineroar, if it is faster than the opposing Incineroar, which we would hope it is, um, it should be able to take down that before it, it can take down us or something along those lines. So it's all about a, a plus one Dragon Ascent though into this Finny. The Finny probably protects here though. Um, this is why we need our Incineroar to be a little bit faster than theirs, so if they do protect then we can knock their Incineroar out before uh, they knock us out. So let's see what my opponent's going to lock into. They might not even protect the Finny, might be confident they can take it. Uh, but here we go. Ray for the win! Can we do it? This has been a hard, eked out battle. Uh, it's not over yet. If you do take down the Finny, we are going to be able to win this game. Man. <laughs> that has been a hard, hard match, and we do outspeed the Pause and Incineroar. Take down the knockout. Very good game to Luca. <sighs> I feel beat after that, my friends. I do, I feel beat. It is a soul fest. I think we figured that out earlier from the Earth Power damage. Um, but extremely good game from Luca, um, and um, one that uh, I hope you all enjoyed. In the comfort of your own homes, or wherever you are, and your commute to work, or at school, or wherever wherever in the world you are watching this. I do feel knackered now. I feel like the concentration <laughs> watch is just collapsed in this next game. Now we'll be fine, we'll be fine, we'll be good. We're on a we're on a good wavelength now. So we'll um we'll search for our next opponent and we'll see how quickly we can lock into that. Um let's choose some music. Um Team Skull Boss, let's go for that. We never have that, so that's a nice one to have. And um, yes, we are. So next week, we had a request to play uh, Zerndon on the channel. So we will be playing Zerndon on the channel. And I think next week, maybe our last week of our Ultra Series content, Battle Series anyway, uh, before we move into Sword and Shield. Because then that will take us up to what we will be at. Uh, that will take us into... Right, let's get the calendar up. That will take us to the, 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 the 1st of November. And then we'll have a week where we'll have... Pretty much just probably showdown, probably more stream content, and then we'll be going into Sword and Shield stuff. So that's the idea. 
So we're going to finish up the Ultra Series next week on the channel with Zendon, a particular Zendon build. Looking forward to it. It's a strong team, and I think it's probably one of the strongest cores of the format. Uh, people will argue that it's not, but I think that it's it's kind of coming good at the end of the, the format, which indicates most of the time that it is going to be the best core. We've got Brennan up next, 1836 rated Spanish player. Have we played Brennan as well? Or we've definitely played a variant of Spanish Reign, haven't we? Not with this team, but uh, we'll get into team preview and see what we're going up against. So Brennan bringing a team of Kyoga, Rayquaza, Incineroar, Ferrothorn, Stack Attacker, and Tapacoco. So the Spanish Reign variant has uh, the double steel core protected by that Reign from the Kyoga. Uh, Rayquaza going to be the pairing, restricted pairing with that Kyoga. You've got the Intimidate, Fake Out support from the Incineroar, and then the Tapacoco, which is likely holding the Z-move. Maybe the Stack Attacker, maybe double. Um, but speed control on my opponent's team, uh, other than... Trick room, they've not really got anything to um, to take advantage of. So we could um, utilize our Tailwind. Uh, I think Coco here for ourselves is an extremely good Pokemon to bring. Um, threatens the Kyogre, threatens the Rayquaza as well, pretty hard. Um, Incineral isn't bad. Suicune, I do like a lot. And Groud, did we bring Groudon or did we bring Rayquaza? Hmm. I think we bring ground on because if we can manipulate the weather, get that rare to mega evolve, then we've got a good chance with our own weather and we need some extra firepower for stacker and ferrothorn, so we'll lock in with that. We'll leave our rare at home, which I don't know how comfortable I feel doing, but I feel like with <laughs> we've got tools on our team to deal with my opponent's team. It's just playing it well and it's going to be a tough tough battle obviously in the upper echelons of the 1800s they've been playing this team solidly and it's been doing really well so let's see if we can cause a little bit of an upset here my friends the flinch squad see what we can do so we're gonna uh, <laughs> same lead snap um who wins um okay so we're gonna see same leads coming out for me and my opponent um I want to really protect Coco here and just pivot out with Incineroar. I think um, it's probably the best idea for us. But we don't want to be pivoting into. Don't want to be pivoting into Groudon just yet. Um, so we'll protect. And they protect. <laughs> and they U turn. And then we U turn. So we get the first U turn out. Alright. Well, that's not the worst thing in the world. Do we bait them in with Groudon? Do we bait them in with Groudon? Nah, I don't think we do. I think we bring Suicune onto the field now. Bait them in with Suicune. And we'll see. Yeah, the opposing Incineroar is definitely going to go for um, the U-turn. Yep. Oh, it's into Coco. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. That makes things a little bit more interesting, for sure. Um, hmm. We could get a Tailwind up here, you know? Because I think Sweetcoot will take Thunderbolt from this type of Coco. Well, that definitely will. We'll Volt Switch. Right, into the Incineroar. We could Snarl as well. We could Tailwind, Scald. Still wind is probably better though. So we use our Volt Switch into the Incineroar. Um, and we don't get a Groudon in here, I don't think. I think we get our Incineroar in, just so we've got a bit of fake out support. Let's see what my opponent goes for. I wonder if they're tempted to go for the Suicune with an electric type attack. Are they Volt Switch, yeah, that's fine. Take a hefty chunk of damage for it, but I mean, it's not the end of the world. We're going to see a U-turn from the Incineroar. What do we see coming? Kyogre? Yeah. Because what they play that they're, they're going to try and do, I think they'll probably try and get um, Tapu Koko back onto the field. And then pull the hard switch into Ray. 
to get the ray out and beta ground on, on onto the field. That's that's what I would think they would try and do. But if we see Ray come out, it does make things a little bit more difficult. Well, it definitely makes things a bit more difficult for us. Because we want the Ray to Mega Evolve, but I don't think my opponent's going to do it lightly. I think they're going to bide their time. Yeah, it's a type of Coco. Now we could play the game where we go Ice Beam into the Coco. Mm. I mean, we can fake out. We could bring in Groudon right now. Or we could bring in our Coco. I'm going to bring in Coco and fake out the, the Kyogre. Because then it kind of deters the Rayquaza from coming onto the field. And at least with Suicune in the back, we've got... Um, yeah, there's the Ray. Ray Ray. Here we go. Um, yeah, at least we've got Suicune in the back to be a decent switch in for uh, the Kyogre. Mm, now, what do we do? Do we switch into Suicune? Do we let the do we let the ray get a sword stance off? That's the big question. Because is it ballsy enough to do it in front of a tapa corko with potentially the ferium? The Kyogre might protect now because it ha it didn't protect that that last turn. I mean, hmm. we say we trigger happy with the corko, but. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go trigger happy with Coco into Ray. Okay, so Suicune coming out. If we can get rid of the Ray, it makes the matchup a lot easier. Because then we've got Groudon to just abuse against... Yeah, I don't think we're going to see that. Yeah. We could have brought in our own Groudon there. That would have been the thing to do. Unless Kyogre protects, of course. That would be the safe play, I think, for my opponent. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. It's still not the worst thing in the world because then we've still got we've got skull we can take advantage of the next turn uh, onto the incineroar and if that ray decides it wants to come onto the field again we do have an ice beam we can threaten with we just want a berry procked on us we can that's the thing be interesting to see how much this does to the incineroar as well not quite enough okay Definitely in Scald range, though. All right. Well, we'll go for a we'll go for a Scald into the Incineroar, and we'll just protect Coco right now. Um, yeah, because I think if you are my opponent, you probably fake out the Coco um, and go Water Spout, which Suicune should take and just proc that Wiki Berry. So putting us about where we are now uh, with our health, just a bit more, maybe. Depending on what the, the water spout does. I hate these matchups though. It's always like it's always so tricky to, to get like some advantage of your opponent in these matchups. So we're gonna see a fake out. It is gonna be into the sweet coon. Um we should still take Okay, well there's a nice beam. Okay, the tail one does pitter out. Okay, well that's still not the worst. Um we can get rid of the Incineroar now. We can go for a Scald. Or we could go for another Tailwind, to be honest. Um, I'm going to go for a... Uh, I'm going to go for a Tailwind. And I'm going to go for a Volt Switch into the Kyogre. Okay. If this is Ray, which it is, okay. Which is fine. Now we can't bring in... We cannot bring in uh, our Groudon here. Now we're going to lose Incineroar, likely lose Incineroar, I think, if we see an Origin Pulse. But hopefully Suicune's Berry gets procced, and I think, really, the Tailwind's probably the better option right now.
Let's see what the Kyogre does. Large Impulse. Come on, Suicune, take it. Please take it. Yeah, it takes it like a champ. And and Incineroar takes it, which is super nice. Okay, well, that's good. Suicune, back in business. And Incineroar, back in business. So, that's great. We haven't lost anything either. So, that makes things a lot better for us. Um, Alright, right, well... Interesting indeed. Uh, we can go for an ice beam for sure into the ray. We could scald that slot as well. I'm gonna scald and I'm going to fake. Um, what do we? I mean, the burn would be nice, but we're not gonna be doing very much. Ice beam would be nice. Uh, I'll fake out the Kyogre. We just want to get damage onto the. Okay, the Kyogre to switch out. Uh, Instant will come in. If we see the the ray mega evolve, that would be pretty huge for us. That would be great. It might go for a sword stance though. That's the only issue, um, and that makes things a bit more tricky for us. Okay, ray gonna protect. Not mega evolve either, which is interesting. We get the fake out and an ice beam. There we go. Okay. So. Hmm. Do we leave Suicune in to take an attack or do we bring in Coco? I think Coco might be a nice switch for Suicune here and then we'll go for We'll go for a knockoff into the Rayquaza because it's likely holding the berry and if we can knock off that berry I know it would be useful for us to U-turn pivot out so we've got the Intimidate to come back in But at the same time if we can get rid of that berry it does make it a little bit easier to manage later in the game uh, we are going to see a fake out from the Incineroar. It is going to be into that Suicune slot. Knockoff coming out. We do get rid of that berry. Do some nice... Uh, not nice damage. No damage. And we do see the Sword Stance come out from the Ray. Alright. Well, it's not the end of the world. Um, I think we will go for Volt Switch out. And we will pivot back into Suicune. And then we can... What we'll do is we'll Volt Switch out with Coco, get Incineroar back onto the field, um, and just get rid of that Sword Stance boost, because the Ray's on plus one at the minute. And potentially at the same time, we're going to be able to get rid of the Incineroar as well. Which makes our lives a lot easier. There, the Ray is going to Mega Evolve. Alright, where are we going to see? We're going to see Extreme Speed, maybe. It is going for it. Is it into the Coco? It's not going to be enough though, unfortunately. Plus one, not enough. I'm going to lose the Incineroar. Okay, right. Well, we'll get our Incineroar back onto the field. And then, we'll see. It'll probably be Coco coming out from my opponent, I'd imagine. But we still got to switch into Groudon if you want. Our Tailwind does pitter out. It'll be Coco that comes in, 100%. Hmm. We've got to watch out for the the Ferium though, and now our Coco's in a, a really nasty spot to deal with the Ray because we are in extreme speed range. That's the that's the problem here. Um, we'll go for a fake out into the Ray though. I think we take a Volt Switch and a Thunderbolt from the Coco, so we could potentially just go for another Tailwind here. Yeah, I think we will take it. We'll take it. Thunderbolt. Yeah, Suicune. I'm confident. I'm feeling confident that Suicune will take this. Volt Switch again. Yeah. Now this is perfect. For us! Come on, Suicune! Four health! Yes! <laughs> best dog. Best dog. Uh, so we got a Tailwind up. Uh, that's pretty huge for us now because the Ray... It can take our Suicune down. You've got to think it can take our Suicune down with... Um, an extreme speed, but um, we do have the opportunity now to U-turn out onto the Kyogre and get our Groudon onto the field, get our Incineroar out, have the ability to intimidate that Rayquaza once again and nullify um, the Kyogre from going for its powerful water type attacks. So I am going to go for that Ice Beam into the Ray and I'm going to go for a U-turn into the Kyogre. Okay, we're going to see the Kyogre switch out. We're going to see the Rain Lift and the Coco come onto the field, which is super fine. Uh, extreme Speed, yep. It's into the Suicune. Makes sense to do that. 
But now we get Incineroar out onto the field with our Groudon. <sighs> and we could get a Tapakoko out onto the field, but it's probably better to get a Groudon out onto the field right now. Yeah. Big boy Groudon, here we go. We go for an eruption. That might be an option. Or do we go for a precipice? Because we'll definitely the Coco's pressured now, so the Coco has to protect. Uh, we could eruption. Um, we'll bring in Incineroar. Because eruption will do well. It's our only way to hit the ray, really, at the minute, isn't it? Um, and we kind of need to be able to do that. We could pull a hard switch out into Coco and Eruption. Mm. It's just if the Kyogre comes in and we see the Rayquaza Sword Stance. It's never going to be good, is it? Um, but they can't really switch Kyogre in right now. That's the, that's the big thing. They can't switch Kyogre in. So we could potentially Eruption. Because the risk of Precipice Blades is too much. So we'll, we'll fake out the rain, go for an eruption. Coco does protect. I'd imagine Rayquaza will protect as well. Let's scout out what we're going to do. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Now we can Precipice and get rid of the Coco. We're not going to be able to get rid of the Ray though. That's the only thing. And it, is, it, is it minus one at the minute? But we can get the weather control if you want going forward. That's the thing that we've got. Let's see what this ray is. Okay, it's minus one. That's fine. Um, yeah, so I think the best play for us is going for the Precipice Blades. We'll go for a U-turn into the ray. And then we keep it in check. We'll get a Coco onto the field. And... Uh, yeah, we'll get rid of the ray. I would imagine the ray will go for a Soul Stance here. We could have went from the eruption, but it's so risky. Like the Kyogre comes in, we don't get an attack off. At least this way, we definitely guarantee we get rid of the Coco. Get a little bit of damage onto the Ray. We'll get Incineroar out. Nice crit there. We'll get Coco onto the field once again. Uh, it is in extreme speed range, so that's not ideal. We're in a bit of an awkward position right now as well, um, where the Kyogre will come in. Yeah, there's a sword stance. Okay. And we could just press this blaze and dazzle gleam. Huh. Could we could we do that? Could we do that? Is the precipice blade going to be enough to get the Kyogre, though? That's the question. I don't know if it is. And do we forego our weather control? Because really, when it comes down to it... Um, we still got... No, we've got no Tailwind. I think you've got to... Hmm. Like, you Extreme Speed Coco for sure here. And we, we, we kind of want to get a Weather Control out, don't we? But I don't know if a Precipice Blaze is going to be enough to get the Kyogre, which is the big problem. Whereas if we switch into Incineroar, and then we protect Coco, which is like the, the most straightforward thing to do here, I think... The only thing is, if my opponent sees round this and goes for another sword stance, then it's going to be very difficult to kind of come back from, honestly. Um, we'll see. We'll see what they do. But if they origin pulse here and it misses Incineral, this could be that could be pretty huge. That could be really pivotal for us, like really pivotal, because then it gives us a bit more, a few more options to kind of play with going forward. There's a sword stance. That's what I kind of I was afraid of. <sighs> and the origin pulse. Mm, it will take down. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because now I think we're kind of back in the same situation, aren't we, as before? Well, you probably. Well, you definitely extreme speed the core core. What do you? Do you? Um, yeah, I think you've got to here. We could eruption, but it's not going to be doing enough damage to the ray. 
I mean, we could go for a double protect with Coco. If we get a double protect, that could be, that could be pretty big for us. I think um, if we get it, I think it's probably our best play at this point. Because I think you have to go for the extreme speed into Coco. We get it. So we've got a chance. We've got a chance. Maybe a chance. There's the extreme speed. It is into the Coco. Um, going to get this eruption off. Let's see what damage this does. Okay, maybe. Ice beam. It's going to be too much though. This weakens the eruption. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's just disgusting damage. This is why... Yeah, well, to be fair now, we can't win this. We can go for a Precipice Blades, and we can go for a Triple Protect. We, we need the tri we need the Protect, but we fail. The Extreme Speed comes out. My opponent knows that it's our only lifeline. We'll get a Precipice Blades into the Kyogre, but there's no way we can beat a uh, plus, um, plus two Ray, unfortunately. Um, and this is again kind of coming back to that point I made earlier about uh, the book of Groudon and going maybe Dragon Claw here would be a lot better, wouldn't it? But um, we'll give my opponent the opportunity to kick our butt as we go for an eruption. Um, and uh, I think we did well. We did as well as we could. We took it right down to the wire and we're very close in the end. But uh, my opponent just had the, the edge, I think. The matchup wasn't as easy as it could have been for us. And, uh, but we did as well as I think we did. And very good game to Brennan. And uh, an incredible game to have on the channel. Um, so I uh, can't be sad about the result. A little bit sad about the result, of course. I uh, would have liked to pick up the win, but never mind. Very close. And uh, one of those games I feel like I'd love a best of three with. So maybe in tomorrow's episode, because we're going to be ending up now. We'll come back and we might bump into Brennan again. That would be incredible. And I'm sure you guys at home would enjoy it. But uh, that will wrap up today's episode. Bit of a longer one today. I had two really sluggish games. So hope you've enjoyed them regardless. We'll be back tomorrow to finish up with this team. And uh, before we move on to a new team next week. Have a great day, whatever you're up to. Morning, afternoon, night. And I'll see you all for the next one. So until then, my friends, take care and bye-bye.